Welcome back. You're watching The Globe here on SABC News Channel. I am Tsipiso Makwetla. U.S. President Joe Biden has formally nominated federal appellate judge Ketanji Brown-Jackson to become the first black woman to serve on the Supreme Court. He says it is time for the nation's top judicial body to reflect the full talent and greatness of the United States as a nation. For too long... Our government, our courts, haven't looked like America. And I believe it's time that we have a court that reflects the full talents and greatness of our nation with a nominee of extraordinary qualifications. President Joe Biden on Friday announced his pick for the Supreme Court, nominating federal appellate judge Katanji Brown Jackson to succeed retiring liberal justice Stephen Breyer. If confirmed in the closely divided Senate, 51-year-old Jackson will become the first black woman appointed for the lifetime job with the nation's top courts and the sixth woman ever to serve on the courts. I am standing here today by the grace of God as testament to the love and support that I've received from my family. Speaking from the White House, Judge Jackson said she happens to share a birthday with the first black woman ever to be appointed as a federal judge, Constance Baker Motley, whose career inspired her own professional journey. And if I'm fortunate enough to be confirmed as the next Associate Justice of the Supreme Court of the United States, I can only hope that my life and career, my love of this country and the Constitution, and my commitment to upholding the rule of law and the sacred principles upon which this great nation was founded will inspire future generations of Americans. Biden described the Harvard-educated Jackson as a deeply qualified and distinguished jurist, adding, During this process, we look for someone who, like Justice Breyer, has a pragmatic understanding that the law must work for the American people. The president called on the Senate to move quickly to confirm her. If Democrats remain united, no Republican votes would be needed. The Senate's last year voted 53 to 44 to confirm Jackson to her current position on the influential U.S. Court of Appeals for the District of Columbia Circuit. Though Senator Lindsey Graham, one of three Republicans who voted for her on Friday, said Jackson's nomination showed the radical left has won President Biden over yet again. Jackson, who was raised in Miami, earlier in her career represented criminal defendants who could not afford a lawyer and eventually served eight years as a federal district judge. She was part of a three-judge panel that ruled in December against former President Donald Trump's bid to prevent White House records from being handed over to a congressional panel investigating the Capitol attack. While Jackson wouldn't change the 6-3 conservative tilt of the court, her nomination enables Biden to refresh its liberal wing with a much younger jurist who could serve for decades. Okay, speak now to John Leboutlier, a former United States congressman from New York uh, in the United States. A very good evening to you, John. Thank you so much for taking the time to speak to us. Okay, so we've just heard about her fantastic pedigree. Is she a shoe-in? I think she is. I, I think that she will get all 50 Democratic senators, which assures her confirmation. And I think there will, in the end, be several Republicans who will vote for her. The bench that uh, she would join, should she join, how difficult would or easy would it make her job? And we'll go into her history, the kind of work that she's done. I mean, she's been described as somebody who is willing to uh, represent uh, people that others would ignore. So is it, uh, you know, populated with uh, conservatives, moderates? What kind of a bench would she be looking to join? As your piece pointed out, she's going to replace a liberal jurist in Justice Breyer. She's not going to alter the six conservative, three liberal thing. It's not really six, three. It's five, three and one being Chief Justice Roberts, who is a Republican and a conservative, but not a crazy Republican conservative. He's he's been siding more with the liberals on key things to make it five conservative four on the left. She'll be in that four. So she's not going to alter the overall vote on many controversial bills. But I do think her presence there humanizes the Supreme Court, which was for years 
nine white men. Then we started having a couple of women. We have a black man, conservative, in, in uh, Clarence Thomas. We never had a black woman. It's high time we do. Biden promised to do it. And he had a lot of good choices. And this lady is so qualified that no one should vote against her. It used to be you never voted against someone because of their ideology. You only voted if you did not think they were temperamentally suited to be a Supreme Court justice. That's up to about 30 years ago. It has now become crazy politicized uh, where they're judging stuff that really shouldn't be part of the equation. And we should just look at the person, not how they might rule in 10 years on some hypothetical case. Mm. So I want to look at uh, the landmark 2004 Supreme Court's uh, judgment on Guantanamo Bay. Um, that ruling found that uh, prisoners could file lawsuits challenging their indefinite detention. The federal public defender then in the District of Columbia assigned uh, then a very young lawyer, Tanji Brown Jackson, to uh, the case to say that she, she was the right fit. Okay, it seems like uh, we need to um, dial back John Labutlia to continue our conversation around uh, the nominee to the Supreme Court. Uh, as you heard John Labutlia say that um, President Joe Biden had promised to do it and he's finally done it. He's uh, nominated uh, Ketanji uh, Jackson Brown and uh, we're just looking at her record and what makes her a good candidate. You're watching the globe here on SABC News Channel. Don't go away.